High-speed trains have become an iconic part of British railway history. Although initially introduced as a stopgap in time for the launch of the advanced passenger train, they've since been running on our railways for the past 49 years. As they reach the end of their life on the Midland Main Line, we wanted to take the opportunity to celebrate their legacy. Okay, so, so, so this book is the intercity story. So I turned to this book to sort of get a little bit of reference about what the HST means to the railway. And this might look a little bit Giaconori now, but hopefully um, this, 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 this will work. 1970, APT it was set to boldly revolutionise the railway. But we couldn't wait for that experimental train and the time to pass for that experimental train to come to fruition. So we needed to develop something along what we'd call more orthodox lines. So not quite revolution, a bit more about evolution. So at a similar time, back in 1970, something called HSDT, the High Speed Diesel Train, was born. So some 22 months later, 1972, saw the first HST roll out of the works here in Derby. And that was a full um, pre-production train ready for passenger services. So roll on to 1975, and that is when the first HSTs were introduced into passenger service on the Western region. And it'll be a little time until the Midland actually got those HSTs from the time the first ones rolled out of the um, production line at Derby. Having been maintained at Neville Hill Depot and serving customers on the Midland Main Line for the last 39 years, they're a huge part of many people's lives. But for colleagues across EMR, they've become so much more than just trains. They're part of our DNA, our livelihoods, our memories, and part of the railway family. It all started off uh, in 1973 with an advertisement in the Yorkshire Evening Post. So I put in for that and it was craft changeability apprentices required for the HST. Um, I got an interview a year later and here I am now, 47 years later, stood at side of 43102. It's a different, different life of working on an HST in, in the main works because the loco started arriving mid mid 70s, 75, 76. It was only really when you come to, to a depot like Etches Park, um, where you become involved with the whole of the locomotive. My first memory of the HST was in the, uh, in the early 80s, and I was very young at that time, and they were a bit daunting, and I was working at Crickwood in the depot, and they came into Crickwood and I worked on them there. They were nice to work on, they were an old school train, I'm an electrician, so there was nothing too technical on them. A lot of these new trains, you put a laptop in and change a box. At least for these, it was you know, under there, mending a train, so to speak. So, I'm 58 now, I won't, probably won't see another one that kind of ilk again. Uh, we started off as second men, drivers or driver's assistants, whichever, whichever you want to know it as. We didn't come on the job and start as a driver then. It, it happens now, people start on the railway as drivers now, but the, we didn't do that then. You had to work your way through to, to become a driver, so it was quite a lengthy process. But we learnt a hell of a lot by doing it that way. We worked with some really good people, not just on HSTs, but on all the other locomotives. And uh, that gave us the grounding for what we needed to do the job today, really. 
first memory working on HSTs um, when I came here to St Pancras in 2003. Um, uh, it was something I, I set my heart on from a schoolboy when I first saw them in 1977 as a lad. Um, I wanted to drive them and that's, I managed to get my, uh, my target and did it. So I'm quite happy with that. When they first entered service on the Midland Main Line in 1982, the Intercity 125 units served London, Bristol, Edinburgh, and as far south as Penzance, and as far north as Aberdeen and Inverness. And first class really was a first class experience. The normal shift could be either a six hour shift where we go to London and back, or we used to, we normally do a 10 hour shift where we do a double trip to London. And I think it's the feel of the HSD train that we have, walking through the train. You can actually stand in one of, you know, from the Buffalo area and you can see all the way through the HSD train. I think that's really nice, that's good. The Master Cutler, it was a service for the business classes and it ran from Leeds and it went down to London King's Cross. You had four second standard classes coaches. You had three first class coaches and a catering car. And it was set up like two full coaches for breakfasts. It was laid out like a silver service restaurant. Had flowers on the table, white tablecloths and we used to have business people, it used to be full every day, people booking. Yes, I enjoy working at HSD. I think there's more to do physically on HSD than it is on the uh, other units that we have, other trains that we have. I love the fact that when we're dispatching HSD that you can lower the window and you can feel all the fresh air, whether it's in summertime, nice warm air, or in freezing wintertime, freezing cold. Just remembered, set 11 was the Yorkshire Pullman. When I started 20 years ago, it was uh, primarily HST working and the service that we did back then was just phenomenal. You could get like a full meal, we did breakfast, uh, we did a, an all-inclusive ticket, we did a bar, a trolley uh, and you'd, you'd be on with your crew. It's just really fantastic, great atmosphere, great place to work, um, all about teamwork and you're on in HST. I mean, these things are iconic and uh, just working was just an absolute joy. But it wasn't all smooth sailing and first class service. When you talk to our people, every power car had its own quirks. They'd often be described as having their own personalities and no working day was ever the same. They all had their own personalities. They were all like part of the family. And, and certainly it was very sad um, so some people will think I am very sad, but when, when we took those, those vehicles out of service and we saw them parked up uh, over at Lichurch Lane uh, Works, it was a bit of a sad moment. You'd live with those vehicles and, and, and you knew them all um, you know, like part of the family. But the HSTs, you can be on the same set all day and it'll drive differently from one cab to the other. The brake will be better at one end than the other. You'll get a better, more power one end to another. It's, they're just, but you've got to work that out yourself. Seeing a train driver drive a HST absolutely makes you understand the skill of a train driver and all of those years of experience and training to be able to stop a train in that precise location. And when you think of HSTs, something I didn't appreciate at all is that they are a little bit different um, they don't quite have names, but everybody knows individually how each will perform and will adjust what they're doing precisely for that individual HST, which is an amazing thing. In 1987, the iconic Intercity Swallow 43102, trailed by Intercity 125 Unit 43159, broke the world speed record for a diesel train, a record that still stands to this day. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking to one of my colleagues in the HST Railway, um, who was on the Eastern Region in in the late 1980s, and we were talking about what we were we were doing. And he said, "I'll tell you a funny story about that because the record was never meant to be broken that day. The previous year, they'd broken the record and taken it up to 144 miles an hour with the Tees Time Pullman, and that was actually with passengers on it." They did a speed run from Newcastle to London. This testing was going on for the Mark IVs, which is the stock that's just been withdrawn off the East Coast. 
and they had strict instructions. They weren't allowed to get, they only needed to be doing 140. The creep, speed's creeping up and it's getting to 140, 142. And he sort of rings the test car up and says, um, we're 142 now, um, have you got what you need to get? Oh no, no, we're not, we're not there yet, your speedo must be wrong. Well the power car speedometer at that point was reading 149. So they had the, the speedometers checked that, that night only to find out it was something like five miles an hour out. Hence, the 148 mile an hour speed record. The nameplate we've got on here, I, I racked my brains with a number of other people just trying to think of something appropriate. And, and, and one of the advertising slogans that was being used in the, in the late 70s, early 80s, um, was uh, the journey shrinker. Because really, when this train came in, it was taking sizable chunks off journey times. You know, London York had been not far off three hours and it was coming down under two hours. You know, it was taking, you know, tens of minutes off journey times. You know, you know it revolutionised the intercity railway. When reflecting on the last 39 years of service, everyone has a different memory of our HSTs and what their lasting legacy means to them. First memory of HST is I was, I was I wasn't a driver at the time. I was the second man, and they used to come. We didn't have them on the London line until about 1983, but I think we had one or two on the cross countries. It was all one company, and obviously it was all British Rail then, so it wasn't all split up. It was one big company, and we had drivers here that used to work to Bristol. And I think we had them on them first. But the time I really, really, really got what an HST meant was that first cab ride that I took, sitting in the front of an HST big diesel engine behind you, thrashing away, and then seeing the skill of driving an HST as well. I think the first memory was sitting in the back here, traveling along at 125 mile an hour, thinking, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> this, is, this is gonna go wrong, this is. It feels weird. It's ever such a weird sensation to be going the wrong way. My favorite power car is, is 43059, and we were involved in an incident together. Um, we, we were out on the track and we, it hit the overhead lines, had some damage, I had to rescue it and, and the people and get them home and everything like that. So that's probably my biggest memory of, the, uh, of that, the 43059. So I think one of the most exciting times was in East Midlands Trains we ran several HST charters for, for charity, so for the Samaritans and for the railway children. And we went to places like, like Whitby and Swanage and uh, the North Norfolk Railway. Um, they were really good. Lots and lots of hard work we put into them. And at the end of the day, uh, when you walk off that train and you've managed to raise 25, 30,000 pounds for a charity and everybody's had a really good day out and uh, we've done that in, in a safe way and not delayed anything, uh, there's a real bit of a buzz behind that. The HST has won many a guys, from British Rail Blue and Yellow to our latest EMR purple livery. But underneath the impressive exterior, the technical ability and performance of these units has never failed to impress. I think my favourite HST livery is the Swallow livery, and they've just done 43102 in that, and I think that's a fitting end. And I have a, a small memento of that livery, uh, and this is one of my most treasured possessions. I think since privatisation, the best one was the green one, the middle main line one. For the trains, the uniform was the same colour almost as the trains. The trains were green and yellow. What I specifically like about the logo on the side of the train was the deer. Something that struck me about that deer as well, it didn't have an eye to it. So I just said, OK, we will just blindly go. <laughs> These cows, we were issued with them on the BR. The ladies were issued with these scarves and the men were issued with ties that were similar colours. So I've had it over 30 years. I have to say, it's probably the middle of main line, the teal and green, the teal and orange, yeah. I think that was the, my favourite one. I've always preferred, really, the original one. But obviously there's been quite a few over the years with middle and main line and East Midlands and obviously the, obviously we won't see one in the, uh, the latest livery, I wouldn't have thought. Working on the railway is never boring, and our iconic HSTs have certainly had their fair share of unforgettable moments.
For once in my life we pressed a button and the thing started up first time, which is normally, it normally never happens with an HST, you normally get a big bang and a flash and you think, hey, what we disconnected wrong here. Uh, 1998, when I was working HST train from Nottingham to London, uh, the buzzer system wasn't working, so we had to dispatch with a hand signal. Uh, I did dispatch the train at Loughborough that time, dispatch no problem, we came into Leicester, in 1998, we used to have, obviously it was at the BR, so we used to have a connection time for a Birmingham train at Leicester. So the train used to normally stand at Leicester for five minutes. And the platform staff, I went up to them, I told them it's going to be a hand dispatch because obviously the buzzer system not working. And within that five minutes time, obviously I got distracted and I went to see somebody else. And the time came up and the train dispatched without me on the train. I was still on the platform on the train dispatch. But this involves um, bringing a power core into service in around 2007, 2008. And indeed, one, one of these particular power cores had been out of traffic for, for a long, long time. I can't exactly remember the number. It might have been 43121, which became 43321. But uh, it was that old and, and, and uh, you know, decrepit. There was a tree growing out, out the window of this power car that, you know, an acorn is sort of cedar, the tree was growing out. So, you know, we bought that power car back from the dead and it's still running through Derby today. Somebody's always said that Paul will be here until he's 105. I'll be, walk, I'll be getting pushed around in a bath chair. I, I am being known as sometimes as Mr Neville Hill. Years ago when I was training, they put me with an old hand uh, who still remained nameless, Tony Merrick. Uh, the near will know he is and um, he was he was retiring it was like his last day at work and we got to Wellingborough and he just disappeared nobody knew where he was everybody's like where's where's Tony gone where he's supposed to be dispatching the train and he'd gone to the shop to buy ice creams for all the staff on board uh, <laughs> delayed the train uh, and then we we had to sort of like do a please explain as to why the train was late and I just said You've got to speak to Tony about that one, that's his part. <laughs> nice ice cream, though. <laughs> we know this is the end of an era, not just for our colleagues, but for enthusiasts who have followed the journey of our HSTs through the years. For many, they are much more than just a train. They've become a fundamental part of people's lives. Best memories, I suppose, or achievements is probably a better way of putting it. He's back in 2014. I decided one day on a summer Saturday to go out and try and do all six train operating companies HSTs in one day. And I did do it. It was a very, very long day. I left at six in the morning, didn't get back till nearly one the next morning. But I've done it and I'm really glad I did. Um, it, people think I'm mad, but I just thought, no, I'm going to do it. So I've got to do this, I have to do this. As everyone knows, I love HSTs and I wanted something, once they're gone, to be a permanent reminder of them. Yeah, I had the, um, I had the HST um, picture from uh, a driver colleague at Derby. I wanted that one because it had the old Barlow shed in. It had everything about the station, the old station, the Barlow shed, the HSTs, and Platform 2 where it was always hard to come into. 1984, that was the first HST model which I bought and I bought it off a, a mate at school who wasn't interested in trains or HSTs but had been bought a train set. So I, I spent my, my pocket money and gave him 10 quid or something and, and bought myself uh, uh, my first HST, uh, which I was really dead proud of. Three trains sitting together, there were nine, 10 and 11. And I went, wow, and I got my camera out don't really know. I was just so happy to see all consecutive numbers just sitting there in my station. I won't probably not see that again. The one that I'm most drawn to is 007, probably because I like James Bond. <laughs> so I think it's fair to say the HST has touched every part of our business. From the fleet team, particularly Neville Hill crew um, who maintain these trains overnight and have turned out a really reliable train day in day out through to our onboard teams the chefs cooking those amazing breakfasts on the HST train managers of course our train drivers who have come to love them and understand each of those individual um, nuances and then there's the rest of the business that have absolutely supported that and sold the HST as a product and from the early days of actually selling selling the dream and making the HST a train of the people it really has been a team effort 
and I think the HST has been the pinnacle of that uh, team effort and I'd like to thank every one of you for you, the part that you have played in that team effort. Fairly emotional. It, it's, I think you look at it and it's a pride. It, it's a pride. It's yes, we've got it. It's something, something that uh, you can actually look at it and think, well, yes, we've actually, we've, we've actually done the right job of it. It looks good. I would just give them a big hug and say farewell. Thank you for all the troubles, the joy, and everything that you brought into our life. And mainly, you have created a job for lots of people. So, thank you. So if HST was a person and I was saying a few words to them at a party, I'd probably start with, um, you've had an amazing career. 46 years is an amazing career by anyone's um, imagination. I'd probably end that with, shouldn't you have retired a little bit earlier so you could enjoy your retirement, but ultimately an amazing um, career. And the thing I would say is just be supremely proud of your legacy and everything you've achieved. You have truly changed the railway, you've probably changed the world and you are a really, really, really tough act to follow. I'll be sorry to see the HSCs leave. Um, they've, been, they've been good to the railway. Uh, they're in their fifth, fifth decade now. Some elsewhere will see 50 years of service. Um, so I, 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 I think of them as old ladies. Uh, I look after them, I treat them as if they're my own. And yeah, I'll be sorry to see him go. To be honest with you, I'll have to part HST as a, a, my family member because I have always known the HSTs ever since I joined the railway in 1982. So to me, HSTs are like a, a family member. And that's when maybe I'm, why I'm feeling sad that the HSTs are going. Yeah, family member, definitely family member. Losing, losing the HST would be like losing a pet or a, or a loved one, a goldfish, perhaps a goldfish. <laughs> Alright, maybe a hamster. It's a mid-sized mid dog. <laughs> I think that, thank you very much for being, you know, a, a real good worker. Yeah, and thank you very much for, for bringing me so much fun and enjoyment and, and, you know, I really have enjoyed working with it. I believe the every industry uh, has its, uh, its greats, its icons. I think the space industry has the Apollo rocket, the Saturn V. I think the airline industry has Concorde. And I think the HST is, is our icon, our great. And it's our Saturn V and it's our Concorde. It's a farewell old girl, you've done well, you've done very well. <laughs>